Greg from GreatDrams.com here for another whiskey review. Today having a look at uh, Craig Ellicke, fresh from Speyside and affectionately known as the Rock of Speyside given that it's in the exact location of the convergence of two rivers. Now for you who are not familiar with uh, Craig Ellicke as a brand or as a whiskey, um, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, only been released under its own brand for the last couple of years. Uh, previously uh, was you know blend fodder like many of the single malts uh, distilleries up in Scotland over the years um, but you know it's something really special about this whiskey and something that's very close to my heart as you'll find when we go through the full range here from the 13 which is in my hand to the 17 the 23 and of course the world's best single malt whiskey for 2017 the Craig Ellicke 31 year old. Now what makes Craig Ellicke different? Well you know a few things. Uh, a, you know, it's virtually unheard of, yet has won world's best whiskey a couple of times with the 23, now the 31. Um, it uses worm tubs, uh, which give the actual end spirit and end whiskey and years down the line, a meatier, more sulfuric and kind of bold flavour profile, quite a thick um, flavour profile. And, you know, worm tubs are ex incredibly expensive to uh, run versus your normal condensers and coolers and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where the investment in the upfront of creating the spirit and that distillery character, which has been around since 1891, if memory serves, um, and maintaining that right now and in the future is something that's really at the heart of what uh, John Dewars and Sons, who owns Craig Ellicke, um is all about. And they also had this old distillery cat, or affectionately known as the angry cat, um, because it would be nice and calm and chilled out and sat in the still room. And um, the workers or distillery workers back in the day actually used to know when it was time to uh, turn the stills off by the cat just suddenly going absolutely berserk when it smelt some of the vapors and it would just fly out of the still house. Uh, so they'd know, okay, now it's time for us to actually do our jobs. Um, something I always find quite interesting about the range is that each of the, well firstly all of the products carry age statements, um, which I'm sure you all know as well as I do is not always the case in the industry and it's becoming less and less the case, uh, especially with new products, new travel retail exclusives and all of that kind of stuff come onto the market. So they always carry age statements and they're always prime numbers. Um, because they do things just a little bit differently, a little bit maverick, a little bit uh, kind of witty and interesting and just out there versus um, the alternates. And kind of it's the verbal way or the visual way of portraying how different the spirit is and how thick and meaty and sulfuric and proud of that they are. They also have this line which I absolutely love on all of the packaging which says old fashioned in 1891. And it just is a beautiful line. And it explains to me and explains to anyone who reads it that this isn't a new whiskey. It's not a new uh, way of doing things. They're not looking to be innovative and pioneering in new processes. They've created a really old flavor profile that even back then was considered old fashioned. Um, but now, you know, with a couple of uh, world's best whiskies under their belt, pretty confident we like the stuff um, and yeah what a beautiful product it is too right let's get into the tasting of a couple of these and then we can go further into the design so in this video I'm going to give you a very quick overview of the four main range products and then there'll be subsequent videos which explore each one in a lot more detail so bear with me this one's going to be pretty rapid so on the 13 year old you know it's their kind of entry level or their, their kind of first rung or rank in their uh, range. As the first level in a range, it is actually surprisingly good and it's got an amazing amount of character um, you know, for the product, you know, for, for where it sits within the uh, Craig Elke range. So on the nose, you know, you're getting apple sweetness. There's hints of smoke, you're getting that sulphur, but not overpowering, not a kind of smack in the face of that sulfuric note which you have, you can get in other whiskies. You know, it's quite light, quite interesting, 
lots of depth, a bit of sweetness in there as well, a bit of vanilla oak. Um, oh. Yeah, that vanilla kind of apple sweetness all kind of combining with a bit of exotic fruit in there as well. Maybe some pineapples, potentially a bit of mango, a little bit of banana. Now the juiciness there, like the pineapple juiciness and those exotic fruit notes just fly. Absolutely, it's as if you've kind of lit a torch on a firework and you just, as soon as you sip it, bang, you get an absolute pow of flavor right in your mouth. Really interesting, a little bit oily, but not too much. Um, there's still that vanilla kind of oakiness in there, that apple sweetness. Oh. Lots of fruit. And there's enough depth in there actually to keep you really interested in so many different layers. A very full bodied whiskey for the first run in the Craig Elke range. Now the 17 year old, this one, you know, as you can see, all the different uh, labels here have different colors. And let's bring a couple up for you to see. So from the 13 to the 17, uh, you can see the different colours here. And these pastel colours are actually design details. Now they've been taken from the uh, exact reference colours of the cask ends found at the distillery. Um, and so the, it all links back to a really well thought out uh, product profile and, um, and distillery release. Fantastic. Now this one. Ooh. We're already opening up with a little bit more smoke here. Feels a little bit thicker. Oh, still quite delicate. There's a bit of spice on this one, which wasn't there necessarily on the uh, on the 13 year old. But lots of brown sugar, caramelized apples. Mmm, candied orange peel for sure. Still quite a thick whiskey, grows and, and emboldens in your mouth, but it is a little bit softer. Bit more smokiness, as I said, quite delightful <laughs> in, in uh, flavour profile. And you've got that vanilla oak, you've got spice hints, or hints of spice even. Um, you've got hints of spice, you've got limes in there, the oranges I mentioned, uh, or the orange peel, not actual juicy orange and a really delicate cinnamon, which also has this kind of note of uh, kind of melting or molten brown sugar there as well. Oh, wow. Very, very impressive whiskey. Now we move on to the 23 year old. Formerly world's best whiskey and my God, I love this stuff. Actually happens to be my wife's favorite whiskey of all time. Um, and, oh, that's good. Let's dive in and see how we get on, eh? Thick, quite a bit more smoke, like sulfuric smoke, but thick, oily, meaty. There's peppery notes in there as well. Oh. It really, really consumes your mouth. Really deep, dark fruits present throughout. Very heavy sherry influence as well. And that note of sulfur on the nose is absolutely divine. I don't know another set of whiskies that have actually managed to intertwine that, that sulfur note with the smokiness and with their overall distillery character so well without having one of the notes ping out of place and feel a bit Ugh, not so sure about this. You'll see from other videos on our YouTube channel that there's the, occasionally you get close but then something is just wildly out of kilter and it just feels a bit wrong. Whereas this is so, so well integrated. I could nose this for hours, absolute hours. bit of 
pineapple in there. I use some nuts, a bit of a nutty note coming through. Those heavy, uh, heavy dark fruit, kind of sherry influence character as well. Very present, very impressive. Smoky, almost like a wood fire, you know, really, really nice stuff. Um, ooh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no boys and girls, you have to be over 18 to watch this. The world's best single malt whiskey. Hailing from Speyside, the Craig Ellicky 31. Cheers to them. Let's see what it's like. Oh. You know, there's, with this one, similar to the 23, there's this alluring sulfur note. You know, it's like a meat feast. You're getting barbecued meats, you're getting bacony notes, you're getting a whole wrap of thickness just on the nose. There's vanilla, there's that pineapple note again, which comes through several of these whiskies. And, oh, a buttermilk note. That's an exceptional whisky. Now we knew that because it got the award, but actually trying it, and the hype is this high, and you're hoping to God it comes in at this high or better, it's right up there if not bigger. That's an amazing whiskey. Now you got that white pepper note, lots and lots of spices, the pepper, the cayenne peppers, you know, that buttermilk note comes through yet again. Vanilla, so well integrated with the sherry notes and the deep dark fruit notes. Pineapple just punching through with the exotic uh, fruit notes that we've seen before. Wow. For me, yeah. World Whiskey of the Year, I'd give it that. Not bad, eh? Cheers, Grey Dragon.